It's 10 p.m. and we are live. Hello, Vishal, straight in. Boom, Parissa, I just saw Laura, Girly Willy 72's back, Steve Dempster's back, Shelly Atten's back. This is crazy, guys, when you can just see instantly. Bang, start periscope off. Barbu's here, Hitesh, Archie. We're getting like a full house. Nina uh, is here as well. This is awesome, guys. This is like day 18, I think, that we're uh, up to now of 30 initially that we said we would. Uh, we would do. How has everybody's day been? First of all, I've had a, a crazy one, um, literally mental. I've been helping out do some casting today for uh, a casting director in Manchester, working on a, a new comedy, which has been amazing actually to see the casting. Um, love how you're always on time. Well, you know, you know, but I've got to, got to try and, you know, keep, keep you guys, uh, you know, keep you guys coming back for more. If it's ten o'clock, everyone knows. Evening, everyone. Hope you well. Says Archie. I am. Thank you very much. Um, awesome to see you, Hitesh. Um, yeah, I was doing some casting today, and it was amazing to see um, a, a few things behind the scenes of why people sometimes don't get jobs. And I'll do this for this is another topic for another night. But there was a few things today that counted people out of roles. Um, good evening, Kim. Um, that counted people out, yeah, of roles that um, that were nothing to do with talent. I mean, they were brilliant because these were recall auditions as well. These guys were awesome. Um, but then um, someone just said sing the thong song. I'm not, uh, what was that guy's name from the thong song with the silver hair? What was his name? Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I won't sing the thong song though, but if, um, if you want to come on one night when we do a blab where I can invite people on, I'm going to start doing that soon. You are more than welcome to sing the thong song. Um, but yeah, going back to this audition, Cisco, that was it, Cisco, that's it. Um, amazing, but yeah, there were some things that that I, you know, was talking to the exec producer about on this this show today that we were casting for, and there was things that were counting these actors out who were brilliant, so so talented, but were nothing to do with their talent. They were more than capable of doing the part, but there was things completely, utterly out of their control. Um, for instance, one girl um, was too good looking. I mean, that's a that's a lovely problem to have, isn't it? Um, but she was just too good looking for the part, but her talent was phenomenal. Um, so, you know, I hope when she, if she doesn't get the part, I don't know who's gonna make what decisions, but I hope when she gets the news of whether she's got it or not, if she hasn't got it, I hope she doesn't put that down to a lack of ability or a lack of, uh, you know, lack of talent because the girl had it in spades, um, but unfortunately she was just too pretty for this part. So that's something that she would probably love to know, but she might never find out. So guys, we need to just remember when we're not given parts, there can be a million and one reasons that are so positive, but we might never find out why we didn't get that role. So that's something for another night, but I'll go into more, more details on that. So tonight's scope, guys, for those who don't know me, by the way, if you are just joining for the first time, my name is Ross. I'm an actor and a voiceover artist from the UK, Manchester in the UK. Um, if you're visiting from far, flung places, let me know where, you, uh, where you're where you from. Do you have a job? Uh, Harry, mate, yes, I do have a job. Uh, I'm an actor and I'm a voiceover artist, so uh, yeah, I work regularly. Uh, Tracy, hello, good evening to you. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're new to this, by the way, yeah, I'm also uh, obsessed with mindset and positivity and coaching people on motivation and getting them to kind of take action on their dreams. Uh, why are you giggling at my name? Harry Moose Knuckle, um, because I just, <laughs> I thought it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very different name, Harry. I've never heard of Moose Knuckle before, but I like it. It's, it's different and you stand out for the right reasons, so uh, so thumbs up. Um, yeah, tonight we are talking, look it up, I'll look it up. Tonight we are talking about risk, guys, and why, why we should take more risk in our lives, really. Risk is often seen as a very negative word and you know it's understandable why people don't wanna take risks. Um, this topic came up because Kim, uh, who is on the scope now, I want to read you, I hope you don't mind Kim, I want to read you a post that Kim put in our Facebook group. So if you're an actor by the way and you are not part of this Facebook group for Bulletproof Actor, um, get yourself over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Bulletproof Actor and request to join. But Kim wrote in the Facebook group today, she put, I made a decision today that I just wanted to share with you all. For several weeks, I've been trying to work in a shop part-time while studying drama at university and struggling to do both. But I didn't want to quit my job because I had the limiting belief that acting, the acting thing, might not work out or that I might not be good enough. This is a limiting belief of, of probably every actor on the planet, to be honest, when they're first starting out before they've had great success. Therefore, I was allowing my passion to suffer. Today, I made the decision that I wanted to concentrate on my acting 
and not to let my negativity stand in the way of what I really want to do. So I handed in my notice this morning and have no regrets about doing it. It was a nice place to work and I've gained plenty of lessons and life experience from it, but now it's time I moved on and move forward. First off, I'm not telling everybody to go and leave the job, by the way. Um, you know, I'm saying, Meredith, hello, Meredith says, follow that dream. Um, yeah, certainly I'm not telling everybody to go and leave, but this was a dilemma that I had in my life eight, about eight years ago. It had been in my life way more before that, though, and it was about eight years when it came to a head. Um, Archie says, congrats, Kim, great attitude. Um, I had this limiting belief in my head, and in Bulletproof Actor, this mindset course that I'm bringing out later next month in October, I can't believe it's going to be October, like tomorrow, that's mental. Um, I talk a lot about external factors that influence us and that create these internal symptoms within in our minds um, that cause negativity and cause us to settle and accept life for what it is. So one of those external factors is doing what everybody else does. Now. The actors that I was surrounding myself with, we all had these terrible jobs on the side that we had to do in order to pay our rent or, you know, or just buy food in order to survive. And that in itself, I mean, there was, there was definitely some truth in that, but there was definitely a limit in kind of like a glass ceiling we were putting on our beliefs of our potential, really. Um, by staying in that environment for 40 hours a week. I was doing like a 40 hour a week job in retail, expecting somehow to have a great acting career. How on earth could I possibly have a good acting career if I'm spending 40 hours of my week, so effectively five, eight hour days of my week, in a shop that had nothing to do with acting? It was, it was, it was this limiting belief that said, Ross, everybody does this. We all have to do this. Everyone does it. And it was a limiting belief and it was a lie. I was kidding myself. I was justifying why I was there and why I was living this life that I really didn't want to be living. Uh, working hard for some man at the top who was earning all the money and I was getting paid minimum wage. It took me a long, long time to get out of that mentality and I'll tell you how I did it in the Bulletproof Actor course that's coming up. But to cut a long story short, Kim, I made that leap as well. It was the best move I have ever done in my life. I says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah, that's a great title of a book as well that I still haven't read, but people keep telling me to read that book. Um, so check that out if you, uh, if you get time as well. If, if you read it before me, let me know. Um, but yeah, it took me a long time. I got out and suddenly I, you said today on Facebook, Kim, it, you felt liberated by doing that. And there is, th this right now will give you a load of momentum and a load of kind of motivation and enthusiasm to go out there and start working harder than you've done before. I'm not an actor, but I'm having the same issue. There are other things I want to do in life. Exactly the, the Ravi. Um, I don't know what your real name is. Ravi, is it? Um, but yeah, this is, this is something, these scopes, by the way, I know I, I relate this a lot to the acting industry, but a lot of this stuff applies, and particularly what I'm talking about tonight, applies to everybody in life, regardless of what job you do, where you're at in your life, how successful you are. This all applies to everybody in every stage of their life. So Kim said she felt liberated by doing this. She felt, you know, she, uh, it is Ravi, excellent. She felt, um, yeah, she felt liberated by doing this. And for a few days, Kim, okay, we talked about habit gravity the other day and how that affects you creating new positive habits. You're gonna have this momentum and this gravi gravity with you. So I need you to use this, this enthusiasm that you now have and this liberation you now feel to really gain some solid momentum moving forward because what you will find in like three or four days, you might start questioning whether you did the right thing or not, and that's gonna cripple you again. So to, to make sure that that doesn't happen, you need to start making, you know, taking massive action from tomorrow and start going, right, I'm gonna get some, some scheduling in place. When, it gets, when we schedule things, guys, it gets done. So if you've got a calendar, get stuff in your calendar and go, right, okay, there's gonna be two hours of my day of pure focus work where I'm gonna, I'm gonna dedicate to whatever it is in your acting career or whatever career, Ravi, that you have, you know, you go, okay, if um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to ditch this job and I'm going to free up all this time. I need to use it wisely. I really need to use it for you know for the the best the best possible uh, ways that I can. And um, so we're going to look. I want to. I just want to look at risk tonight. I've got three reasons, guys. Again, I've not printed these slides out on the back, so you have to bear with me. I've got three reasons, okay, to start taking more risks, okay. And I want to look at this and, and this word risk as something that's positive and something that isn't you know, actually kind of like a, um, uh, just a, a bad thing to do. Our parents tell us never to take risks, probably. You know, our friends won't want us to take risks. We don't want to take risks naturally because, well, in fact, let's just go through it because I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. Number one, okay, first reason why you need to take more risk in your life. Avoiding risk is also avoiding your maximum potential. So do you think I should take the risk of being a duck? Not quite sure what you mean, Lost Kings. 
uh, but explain a bit further. Always interesting comments on these scopes. Risk is a four letter word. Yeah, absolutely. So fear of failure is the biggest reason people avoid risk, right? Okay, and that's understandable. Risk would not be labeled as risk without a reasonable chance of failure, okay? But this is what people forget. There is also a reasonable chance of success. So why, si uh, why sell yourself short? As I said, Kim, I was in your situation, and Ravi, the same situation as you, doing a job that I didn't want to do eight years ago, and really like fearing, fearing risk of going, if I want to be a duck, I will. I hope you are Lost Kings. Go and be a duck. Um, but yeah, I had this thing where I was just really fearing leaving this job. I thought, if I leap and the net doesn't appear, what on earth am I going to do? When we do leap, okay, and we, you know, we actually create that fear, it can be really positive for us as well because effectively it gives us no choice but to become more resourceful than we've probably ever been before. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you're going on about Lost Kings, but it's amazing. Um, I've been with you a long time, Ross, but now you're stretching me. Stretching you what? To take risks, Meredith? Let me know what you mean. Um, but yeah, um, I had this thing where I was like, I don't want to leave you know, all this uncertainty. As human beings, we have some very, very uh, important needs in our life. One of the main needs in our life is certainty, and by taking a risk. Uh, Meredith doesn't do risk. Oh, Meredith, you should do, well, I'm going to give you a few, a few other reasons why you should do risk. And I'm also going to set people a challenge at the end of this to do a risk tomorrow. It's very simple though, you're not going to, uh, you know, you're not going to, going to cause any harm. I want to be a graphic designer, but a DJ at the same time. Don't know what I want to do. Ooh, you need to assess your, your, your passions, Lost King. I also want to start my own clothing label. You've got like a growth mindset by the sound of things. And you, um, yeah, you know, you, you, you have a higher vision for yourself. So what I would do is I would go, you need to find your why, Lost Kings. This is the thing you need to do, mate. So if you've got all these things that you want to do, uh, you're the ambassador of risk. Um, yeah, Lost Kings, what you want to do, mate, is you need to set down why you want to do each of those things and you want to say, in, and the first answer that you give will probably be an intellectual answer. Uh, you want to then ask yourself why that answer that you give first is, is, is important to you and then ask that again and again and again, maybe seven times. I do this exercise called Seven Levels Deep. All the ideas are in my head but don't know what to do. What you need to do is you need to say, yeah, you need to say, why do I want to do these things? Um, and then figure out what your why is for each thing. Whatever you, your why is, whichever is the most compelling for those three things, the one that you probably want to attack first. Or you might find that one of those goals is what I call a push goal that will facilitate the other two. So if you want to start your own clothing label, then you're going to need to know kind of like, you know, graphic design inside out like you, you know, like you do. There might be some areas of that that you need to kind of get more skilled on first that would be a push goal once that's achieved that's going to lead to those other goals as well. So start looking at which is the most compelling why for you, why you want to do it, what impact you're going to have by doing those things and then choose the first one that you want to do. Then all you need to do is find out what the first step is along the way to achieving that. If you can't see 10 steps ahead of you, it doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about that at all. You only need to see the first one and that might be sending an email to somebody, it might be making a phone call, it might be something dead, dead simple. But just do that and then by doing that, the next step on the ladder will light up. You don't need to see the step after that, just the next step. Um, so that's what I would do if you want to if you want to pursue you know more than one thing and you don't quite know where to start. So number one, okay, avoiding risk is also avoiding your maximum potential. Number two reason why you need to take more risks is this one. Number two, no risk equals no opportunity for growth. Okay, you must continually break down muscle. I just went to the gym before, right, and I'm working out and I'm breaking down muscle in order for me to get stronger every single time. Okay. The human body will adapt to whatever stress you put on it, okay? If you stop adding stress, i.e. risk, okay, you will not make any gains, okay? So without consistently challenging yourself, stepping out of your comfort zone and taking risk, you actually limit the amount of growth that you're going to have in your life, okay? Um, you're saying effectively that you don't want more from your life if you're not willing to take any risk. Now, you can do due diligence on that risk and weigh up you know, the likelihood of success, um, but if it's 50-50, you need to go for it, okay? If you go in, actually, there's only 10% chance of success, 
a 90% chance that it's going to fall apart. Maybe you want to kind of either get more skilled at whatever it is that you need to do to kind of up the odds a bit so that you're at least at a 50-50. When it's 50-50, most people focus on the 50% where they could fail, like we said before, okay, but remember, okay, there is a good chance that you will succeed as well. Um, so no risk is no opportunity for growth. Um, Lost Kings, you put a message up there, mate, and I didn't get it because it, it disappeared. The risk of the investment of time for the label overwhelms me. Um, well, in turn, yeah, this is, this is, it will do. If you're looking at it as a whole, you're looking at, at your goal as, as this thing and you're almost putting off fulfillment and happiness until you've achieved the, the overall thing, um, then you're not going to enjoy it. What you need to do, Lost Kings, you need to start focusing on the process and you need to start enjoying the process and therefore you won't be overwhelmed because you'll be able to celebrate the little achievements along the way. So I give an anecdote regularly about like a football, say like a manager of a football team, okay? Uh, what would you say to someone who's afraid of succeeding rather than failure? Oh, that's that's a good one, Ravi. I'll, t I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, Lost Kings, going back to this anecdote about a uh, football manager, yeah? He, he might want to win. So in, I don't know where you are in the world, but in the UK we have the football, the football league called the Premier League. He might want to win the Premier League trophy, yeah? Um, by saying that that's his goal, his overall goal, and until he achieves that. Oh, you're from Manchester, cool. So we're, so we're, uh, we're in the same town. Um, but if he puts that off, you know, his happiness and fulfillment until he's won that premiership trophy, then he's not going to enjoy any of the journey along the way, okay? His, his process of winning that trophy is the daily practice of the team. So what would be a lot better for him, a lot more beneficial, is if he starts focusing purely on the practice of the team so that he can, you know, take the, the, the achievements and the small wins from that along the way. So he's going to have this fulfillment and this momentum and this motivation and he's not going to be overwhelmed by the task as a whole. He's going to be able to break it down. And if you do get overwhelmed, you want to break down your task into just the next actionable step. And like I said, that might be something so simple. Um, you know, if I, um, I've, I've been doing this course, okay, so I'm launching this mindset course next, uh, next month, uh, which is the next month tomorrow, isn't it, October. Um, and if I'd have looked at that at the beginning as a whole and gone, wow, well, I need to write kind of everything that I've learned about mindset and confidence coaching in the last eight years, I think the investment is going to be worth it. If the, I think like, is the investment going to be worth it? Um, well, that's a limiting, oh, there's so much, you know, there's so much that I can give you on this, um, but we don't have time for it all. That in itself, again, you need to do your due diligence to see whether, you know, it is a viable business. But if it's actually the fear of failure that's stopping you, then that's a massively limiting belief. You need to focus on actually, your, what you need to do, mate, your fear of not doing that business and not reaping all those rewards needs to be far greater than your fear of it going wrong. Then you will be forced into taking action and you'll only get that by knowing why you want to do it and asking yourself why it is you want to do that thing. Okay, what it is that, that, that really you know, compels you to moving forward. So when times do get hard and things get messy, you can reset, reframe and go, right, why did I start this in the first place? Right, well, I know because I had this super compelling reason to do it. And that might be something very personal, it might be something to do with supporting your family, you know, stuff that you're going through in the past that you don't want to be doing anymore. I've always hated working for someone, I'd rather be self-employed. I can vouch for this, guys. The day I left, and Kim's experiencing this now probably, the day I left that shop and stopped working for the man and was forced through fear, yeah, a little bit at the beginning, to start taking massive action on my own dreams was the best thing that I, the best thing that I ever did. I became more resourceful forever. I didn't know how to program a website, I didn't know how to do graphic design, I didn't know anything. Over the last sort of six, seven years, I just sat down at a computer and went, right, I need to learn, okay? Uh, my fear of not learning this stuff and missing out on what could be an amazing future for myself is far greater than my fear of investing a bit of money and losing it. It was just a no-brainer for me. And you need to kind of look at it like that, you know? You need to be so afraid of missing out as opposed to failing that you go forward. And otherwise, you're just living a safe life in your comfort zone and it'll be all right, it'll be okay. Over those back, I just noticed that the, uh, the, the, the picture freeze a little bit there. Um, yeah, I taught myself loads, mate, from, from YouTube about Photoshop and web design, all those kind of things. Um, and it makes you more resourceful. It makes you really, really, resor really resourceful so you can go out and really, you know, you're independent, you stand on your own two feet, um, you know, and you go out there and, uh, you know, and start, start using what you've learned. If you, don't, if you don't use what you've already learned on YouTube and all that sort of stuff, it's just been a complete you know, waste of time. Always look for constant improvement. So number two, no risk, no opportunity for growth. Take that risk, Lost Kings. Um, it disconnected, did you see my comment? Yeah, I did, I did. Um, I saw, that's what I was just talking about. Um, you were saying you were self-taught. 
on YouTube and so I was saying, well, if you don't use that stuff going forward, then you know, you've kind of like spent all that investment and you've not put it into anything. So, you know, look at it that way. You've got to, you've absolutely got to, uh, you know, got to use that, otherwise you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, number three, rule number three, why you should take more risk. Okay, regardless of success or failure, the rewards of risk are priceless. Okay, this is a bit, a bit on me I wrote here. So, but without taking risk and facing my fear of failure, I would not be the man that I am today. Okay, what I have learned, how I have developed, and whom I have impacted are far beyond what I had ever thought was possible. Um, I've had great successes. I have had some really good success in my life, but I've had loads of failures, guys. I've failed lots and lots of things and lots of stuff, but with each failure, I've become so much more than what I previously was, you know, and created a larger vision for myself. There are no failures in life. If you learn, whatever you're doing, if that experience, if you learn from it, you are succeeding. You know, it's, it's cliched, you know, you probably read it in every personal development book that you, you probably read on the planet, you know, but there really is no such thing as failure if you are learning from each experience. Yeah, failure is absolutely a learning experience. And you know what, for me, I'll stick my neck on the line and say, I've absolutely, I've learned way more from my failures in life than I have from my successes in life. I mean that, you know, there's, there's been failures along the way um, that have impacted my myself, you know, so in so, so much you know, bigger, larger ways than the successes have. Um, and you need to realize that, you know, um, every decision that you've made in your life and every, you know, every experience you've had have brought you to the place that you are at now. And you can take responsibility for that. That's a really empowering thing, regardless of whether you are in a great place right now or a bad place right now. You know, every situation and every decision that you've made has brought you to this place right now. So from here on out, um, you just, if you don't mind me asking, what do you like? Could you tell your story? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I, I don't mind this at all. I go into this a lot in, in Bulletproof Actors. So I, um, I led a very limiting kind of story for a long time. So in Bulletproof Actor, I teach people how they effectively have a life story that they live by. And it's a story that is developed through past experience and through, you know, bad experiences, good experiences, um, experiences of other people that we know, lots and lots and lots of things. And through that, Generally, other people put these limiting beliefs on us. So teachers at school will say, oh, well, you know, you're never gonna amount to anything or your strengths don't lie in such and such a thing. And I have friends today who, although they are, you know, 25 years down the line um, and they're so much stronger, so much brighter, so much more intelligent, um, that they, um, we don't have meetups at the moment, um, but we might do at, at some point. It might be something that I do. We're definitely gonna have online meetups through the, the course that, I, um, that I'm gonna run uh, later next month. Um, but I have friends, yeah, who like, you know, 15 years down the line, 25 years down the line, are still hung up on these things that they were told at 10, 11 years old. And they're so much more capable now, they're so much stronger. Um, but these limiting beliefs have been pushed on them by other people. They were never like destined to be their own beliefs. Um, but they were just pushed on them by every, everybody else. You should definitely do like life coaching. I love it. I absolutely love it, Robbie, honestly. So my story was, I had, I had a few things going on in my life like 10 years ago. And I was, I'm 33 now. When I was 24, I'd left drama school, so I just wanted to train to be an actor. And I'd left drama school, and I knew I could act, but my drama school had not taught me anything about the business, of the business, how to get an agent, how you know what casting directors did, how you actually get a job effectively. So this was like a, a theme throughout drama schools all over the country, and probably still is today. They don't teach you a lot about the business. So I came out of drama school knowing I could act, but always blaming my drama school for not teaching me the business of the business, okay? I was stuck in a job working 40 hours a week for minimum wage, hating my life, going, I don't really wanna, wanna do this. Um, my, a few things happened. I was diagnosed with an eye condition, which is a degenerative retinal condition, which effectively, um, it sounds bad, guys, it's not something that, I, that defines me at all, but effectively robs you of your sight over your life. So by like, I don't know, 45, 50, a lot of people are legally blind by this point. So that was a big hang up for me, okay? My, my dad passed away as well. There was a lot of like bad stuff going on in my life that were just really limiting me. And I was stuck in this job. I was thinking, well, is there any point in me even you know, getting out if I've got this thing with my eyes? What's the point in me kind of trying to succeed and do anything because um, it might all be worthless. It might be for nothing. And it was such a limiting view on my life. And um, one day out of the blue, a guy called Mark Dharma, who is a massive influence in my life today. I've just set up a business with him actually. Um, I've known him a few years now. Came, he was a life coach and uh, uh, well, uh, he was doing a, a 
a master's degree in LA on positive psychology and a lot of science-based kind of mindset stuff. He came into my shop randomly one day, literally randomly, uh, and I'm not religious, but you know, Destiny, that guy was supposed to come into my shop. I had one conversation with him and it changed my outlook on everything for life. Um, it really, really did. I basically went through a process, which I'm gonna take everyone on Bulletproof Actor through as well, which I need you guys to get disgusted with your life story, you know, with these limiting beliefs that you have on yourself. If you imagine, he, he told me, you know, imagine you're sitting down with your maker, right? Whatever you believe in, if you, if you believe in God or the universe or whatever it is, imagine you were sitting down with, with this person who has, you know, put you on this planet. And he said, you know, okay, this guy says to you, Ross, he says, right, Ross, I've given you this amazing life, okay? And, you know, I've given you, um, you know, this amazing planet, all this amazing stuff in your life if you want it, unlimited potential effectively. You know, you live in a developed country, you're in the UK, one of the most abundant countries in the world. What is it that stopped you being your best? What, and he said, well, what would your reasons be for that? I went, all right, Mark, well, my reasons would be my drama school haven't taught me anything about the business of the business, so I don't even know how to use my degree. I've spent all this money on degree, I don't know how to use it, don't know how to get any jobs. Um, two, um, you've given me this eye condition, which effectively is taking my sight away from me, I can do nothing about it, there's no cure for it. Um, three, you've, I'm 24 years old and you've taken my dad away from me. You know, I've, I literally lost my dad overnight to a heart attack. It rocked my world. Um, my mum has the same eye condition as me and she's blind. So you've left me, you know, kind of with this to deal with as well. Um, that's why I'm not my best. And I think to a lot of people, they would go, well, you know what, that's fair enough, mate. You know, they, they do seem like pretty, pretty just reasons for why you're not your best. But he said, you know what, let's swap it. You're not talking to God. You're not talking to your maker or whatever anymore. You're talking to a survivor of the Holocaust who was in a German prisoner of war camp. Would those reasons stack up for him? You know, would he buy your bullshit story for why you've not been your best? You know, are you going to be able to sit down with that guy and say, these are the reasons I'm not being my best? And he's going to go, totally fine, mate, knowing what he's been through. You know, there's a guy I, I mentioned in, called Taylor, I mentioned in Bulletproof Actor, who's an Afghan, um, not Afghan, he, he was a US bomb disposal expert. He had both his arms, both his legs blown off in Afghanistan. You know, if I sat down with him and said, Taylor, these are the reasons I'm not being my best, is he gonna buy those bullshit excuses for why I am not my best? When that guy every morning has to strap on prosthetic arms and prosthetic legs, and he goes out and makes a difference every day impacting the world. And I'm like, no, you know what? These, these bullshit reasons that I've been telling myself for the last God knows how many years are just, they're completely unjustifiable. You know, I actually have on the, on the surface, you know, so much to be grateful for, so many positive, amazing things that I can actually go out and do. And that changed my life completely. And I, like you, Kim, was like, I'm out. I'm done with this job. I'm done with these people. I'm raising my standards. I'm demanding more from my life. I'm gonna, you know, whatever it takes, I'm gonna teach myself whatever it is. If I have to sit in front of this computer for, you know, for two years to teach myself whatever it is I need in order to impact the world the way that I want to, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, it does put things in perspective, Rabbi, honestly, honest to God. And I know a lot of people kind of will come on these scopes um, who don't know me and they'll be going, oh, but it's just easy for you, isn't it, mate? You know, because you just kind of, you know, you just sit there telling people how they should how they should kind of do all this stuff. You've never been through anything or, you know, or, you know, you just read a few books and you're telling people how they can change their lives too. Everything that I preach and everything that I say is stuff that I have absolutely implemented into my own life and completely flips it upside down. You know, I get so much more fulfillment out of what I do now. I, I earn more money than I've ever earned before in my life. Um, money is not everything at all, but you know, I look at it as freedom credits effectively. You know, I get the freedom to go and do what I want. Um, I surround myself with amazing people. You know, I get to talk to you guys every night, you know, and hopefully impact your lives. Um, contribution is a massive part of my life. You know, what, what I get so much out of helping other people. Um, I just want to see people kind of doing what they want to do and stop kidding themselves with all this bullshit stuff that they tell themselves about why they can't do it and these stories that would never stand up you know, to people who have been through true hardship, you know, and you, you know what, sometimes your story might, might be on that level of Taylor's where, you know, you've been through something as bad as that, you know, you've had some kind of illness or people have been taken away from you through that and all this kind of stuff, but there's still always limiting beliefs in our lives that are stopping us from being our best. So just ask yourself that tonight, you know, what is stopping me from being my best? If I had to sit down with God or my maker or the universe or whoever it is, you know, and justify why I'm not being my best, would my reasons stack up and would they say, fine, okay, yeah, that's all right, I understand. Because they wouldn't, nobody would. Um, so get rid of them. I've got a little risk challenge that I want to, um, 
I want to set you. Uh, and thanks um, for asking me about my story. It's, I don't often get a chance to tell that because um, I don't want to bore people with it. But hopefully, hopefully now you know a little bit more about me. Um, one risk, and this is the simplest risk ever, okay, and it's not even a risk, okay, guys, but people are very scared of risk, and one thing that I notice more than ever when I'm out in public, particularly if I'm in London and I'm on the tube or something like that, nobody talks to anybody, okay, because I think we're scared of being seen as a weirdo or scared of people thinking bad of us or whatever it is. Um, so, all right, Laura, thanks for, thanks for listening to it. Uh, Laura says thanks for sharing that, so yeah, thanks for listening to that. Um, so this is Ross's wrist challenge, guys. So simple, and I'm gonna check up with you tomorrow night and see if you've done it. Tomorrow, take a simple risk, okay? Talk to a stranger at the bus stop, train station, coffee shop, or at work, okay? Engaging in simple conversation with a stranger is a great way to build self-confidence and break down a limiting belief of possibilities. I did this in Starbucks last week. Um, because I noticed a woman was on a computer looking at a mindset kind of thing that I recognised. She was reading a, an ebook on it, um, and I thought, "Oh, I've read that book." Started asking her a, a few questions about it. She's an awesome um, mindset coach, but she specialises in, in underprivileged uh, women. So women who've been through really bad things. They might have, you know, had, had domestic abuse or you know some, some really hard, hard times in life. Um, and she coaches those. She told me some incredibly inspiring stories of the people that she's coaching right now. Um, to the point where I've gone, right, will you record a podcast with me and I'll give it away as a bonus for people who subscribe to Bulletproof Factor when I launch the course. Had I not made that, took that risk of talking to her, I would not have got that out, you know, that outcome from it. So just take a little risk tomorrow. Don't go talking to people who look like they don't really don't want to talk to you. Um, but if you are in an environment where it's conducive to actually just, you know, open a conversation with someone about anything, even if it's just for a few seconds, don't hold back. Take that risk. You don't know where it might lead to. Uh, so that's it for tonight, guys. I hope um, that's been useful for you. But yeah, just you know, look at risk as a positive. Um, you know, don't take silly. Risks, but if if you weigh up the odds and there's a good chance of of it succeeding. Don't be afraid of it and um, take that risk. If you have enjoyed this and you're going to take more risks in future, type yes. Give me some hearts and let me know, uh, you know what, you're, uh, what you think of it all. Um, how long has this one been? 30 minutes. It's been quite a long one again. I will upload this replay as well uh, for people tomorrow. Uh, Nina says thanks for the share. Absolute pleasure, Nina. Um, go for it, Atesh. Yes. Awesome. Um, heck yes, says Steve. Amazing. Yes, says Laura. Uh, yes, says uh, Girly Whirly. This was excellent. And yes to more risks. Amazing, Ravi. Yes, Michelle. Um, awesome. If you're not following me, swipe the screen. Make sure you follow me. You can share this scope with your friends on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, copy the link, share it in an email. Uh, thank you, Tracy. Cheers for showing up tonight. Um, and yeah, subscribe. I will be doing these every night still for the next like 13 nights. I said I'd do 30 days of this, committed to 30 days, and then after that, who knows, we might carry on. Um, you know, I'll definitely still do them regular. Um, but thank you for showing up. I really appreciate you. Um, and like I say, yeah, hopefully you have a bit, little bit more insight about kind of why I do this um, and why I am so passionate about Bulletproof Factor. It's called Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success. It's a mindset course that I launched next month. If you want to take your life to the next level, 10 times your confidence, go out there and get what you deserve from life. Get yourself over to bulletproofactor.com. Leave your email address. You can watch a video there about what the whole course is about. Um, and I will give you uh, email updates for when it launches. And you can actually get involved with shaping the, pro the program as well. You know, I'm, I'm uh, almost at the point where I've finished writing it, but there's still room for a few more things if you guys go, I really want you to talk about this and cover this, then I can do that as well. Um, so thanks ever so much for watching. Um, tweet me your responses. If you've got anything that you want to ask or anything like that, it's at Ross A. Grants. Until tomorrow night, guys. Don't be afraid of risk. Kim, particularly for you, keep up the momentum. Start taking massive action from tomorrow. Don't let habit gravity pull you back to where you were. Um, and I'll catch you guys very, very soon. Vishal, thank you as well. Um, awesome. I'll speak to you soon, guys. Bye for now.